sometimes feel to this island. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time, leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. I'm actually, yeah, so we're playing Dear Esther this week on the post-show gaming session, the last ever post-show gaming session. And I'm going to up the sound volume in the game because he's speaking and I'm just going to shut up when he speaks. So there will be no risk of me speaking over him. Whoa. And this game. It's amazing. Have you played this, Anton? Uh, I've played through the first two levels, and I really like it a lot. But it's uh, partly randomly generated, I hear, so, like, the things that happen and yeah, some parts of the levels and what he says should be different every time you play. Donnelly reported the legend of the Hermit. A holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rowed here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side, and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. At night, you can see the lights sometimes from a passing tanker or trawler. From up on the cliffs, they are mundane. But down here, they fugue into ambiguity. For instance, I cannot readily tell if they belong above or below the waves. The distinction now seems banal. Why not everything and all at once? There's nothing better to do here than indulge in contradictions whilst waiting for the fabric of life to unravel. and like just like now I don't understand what he's talking about but I guess it's like poetry it's just nice to listen to <laughs> I have found the ships yeah I agree crumpled it's, and uh, under a I thought that rain like cameras. in both it tells the me mod that along with this game. present cargo there was a large quantity of antacid yogurt bound for the European market it must have washed out to sea God knows there are no longer gulls or goats here to eat it It's kind of meant to be like that.
Am I supposed to be here, even? Does it matter? Where you're supposed to be? I don't know if it does. No, I'm droning. No, I'm back. Okay, I'm bad at... <laughs> I'm bad at there. There is there. Come back. What? Did I die? Okay, I survived. I don't know what's going on. I'm stuck. So this game costs uh, 7 euros or 7 dollars, I guess. Am I right? Um, I think it was 10 dollars. Okay, 10 dollars or 7 euros. Which is a better conversion than 7 and 7. So I guess I'm just not going this way then, I'm gonna go the other way, back. But, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> kind of disappointed at this point. I thought they would have good enough level design. Like, it's a game about walking. It's a game about level design, so I thought it would be good enough so that I wouldn't feel like I had no idea if I'm going the right direction or not. Hmm. I think that they want you to find places that are the map from where you should go. I think you're supposed to feel a little lost part of this. It's in particular this level. Hmm. I feel Go kind anywhere. of like it's, you know, I don't like this right now, if you know what I mean. Sure. So if that was their intention, then I think that they, you know, they're doing it wrong. Because I'm not supposed to think that I'm not supposed to feel this way. Like it doesn't matter if if the, it's intentional or not. It's not good. Right. I understand. This game is looking amazing still. And it seems like I found my way. Reading Donnelly by the weak afternoon sunlight, he landed on the south side of the island, followed the path to the bay and climbed the mount. He did not find the caves and he did not chart the north side. I think this is why his understanding of the island is flawed, incomplete. He stood on the mount and only wondered momentarily how to descend. But then, he didn't have my reasons. Oh, so he'd actually comment on what I did. That's it. I'm calling the game like the guy. It he is commenting on what I'm doing. It is. Right. When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff path died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. Mm. They were God-fearing people, those shepherds. There was no love in the relationship. Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses, marking the geography with a superimposed significance? that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradiction.
Dear Esther, I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I threw my arms wide and the cliff opened out before me, making this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the bothy on the mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island, where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. Details are so amazing in this game. Yeah. The music is amazing too. And it is. the narration. It's incredibly good at the things that it does. Mm -hmm. I dreamt I stood in the center of the sun and the solar radiation cooked my heart from the inside. My teeth will curl and my fingernails fall off into my pockets like loose change. If I could stomach, I'd eat, but all I seem capable of is salt water. Were the livestock still here, I could turn feral and gorge. I'm as emaciated as a body on a slab, opened up for a premature source of death. I've rode to this island in a heart without a bottom, all the bacteria of my gut rising up to sing to me. Clouds are even moving. Mm -hmm. Looking good. That's the first level then? Yes. Alright, so 
That was me playing the first level of Dear Esther, Dear Esther. I have now driven the stretch of the M5. Let me pause that, yes. So, yeah. That's the last Overgrowth Weekly Post Show Gaming Session. So, thank you for watching. Check out ogweekly.com uh, for uh, loads of OG Weekly stuff. Uh, the archives, <laughs> the upcoming shows, etc. But yeah, thanks for watching and... Uh, I will not see you guys in another press show gaming session. Bye bye. But we will see you at the next G Weekly. Yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will. See you guys soon. See ya.